The third generation Kia Seed has just been given a nip and tuck. What's changed and should you buy one? Watch this to find out. Kia Seed comes in three flavors, a five-door hatchback, an estate, and a shooting brake. The latter is called the Pro Seed and it took the name of the no longer offered three-door hatch. Kia says the Seed family is its best-selling model range. The Seed is produced in Slovakia. The refreshed Kia Seed features a new logo which at first glance may look like the letters KN. Jokes aside, facelifts are all about slight styling updates, some new standard and optional kit, and usually that also means higher prices. On the outside, the biggest changes in the refreshed estate or sports wagon include the upper part of the grille, which Kia calls the tiger nose. Also, the bumper has changed. The tiger nose now has a silver line around it, while the middle part is gloss black, and in this car it is solid which means it's a PHEV. More on the PHEV drivetrain in a moment. Meanwhile, let's look at the bumper from the side. It looks as if this Tiger had a bit of an undervite, no? Depending on the spec, the seat can have LED day running lights, fog lights or full LED headlights. Rear lights are LED except for the most basic models. GT Line and GT Hatchback also get honeycomb design rear lights with animated turn signals. The boot volume is 437 liters in the PHEV, 512 liters in the, come on, MHEV, and 625 liters for the non electrified models. Depending on the spec, an electrically operated tailgate may be available. There are a couple, actually three, shopping bag hooks, a 12 volt socket, deep storage here next to the sill where you can put your charging cables as well as the cargo cover. Further inside is a second shallower storage cubby where you can put your, I don't know, emergency kit. The 12 volt battery is behind the rear right fender or wheel arch, should I say. With the seats folded, we get a flat loading area, but in order to fold the rear seats, you'll have to go to the passenger compartment. On the plus side, some of the estate versions get 40-20-40 split rear seats, which means a skiing trip doesn't necessarily involve using a roof rack. There's not much knee room or space for your feet under the front seats. For an estate, the seat feels tight. The Toyota Corolla Touring Sport is 5 cm longer and it has 5 cm longer wheelbase, so there's more space inside. That being said, the seat is 3 cm higher than the Corolla and some of the difference is felt in the headroom. The door pockets are on the small side. There are a couple of cup holders in the armrest. Under the AC air vent, there is one USB port. Adding a bit of facelift flair are two displays. There is a 12.3 inch virtual instrument cluster in front of the driver and a 10.25 inch infotainment system. 10.25 is optional, 8 inch is standard. Kia now offers over the air updates. According to the press release, also wireless should be Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, at least in this example, I have to plug my Android Auto phone with a cable. It's a shame because there is an induction charger down here. Kia moved most of the settings from the instrument binnacle to the infotainment system, and I think that is a good call. Also, Android Auto is available even with the smaller screen, so no need spending more money on the bigger tablet. Higher trims get electrically operated driver seat with memory function. I mention this because Hyundai and Kia often added electrically operated seats but without memory function, making it pointless. The driving position is good. The seats are comfortable and in this car they are heated. Also heated is the steering wheel. The door pockets are deep, cup holders are decent. Storage under the armrest and the glove box are average size. The biggest changes in the refreshed seat are under the bonnet. You get to choose from a 1.0, 1.5 and 1.6 petrol engines. Then there is a 1.6 diesel as well. And that's the short version. Now the long version. The 1.5 liter petrol engine has 160 horsepower. It can also be a mild hybrid. 
the diesel is only a mild hybrid and the 1.6 petrol engine is either turbocharged and it makes 204 horsepower in the GT model or it is normally aspirated and it works with an electric motor in the PHEV. The diesel mild hybrid comes with IMT or intelligent manual transmission with clutch operated by wire. This allows for coasting even when in gear. I talked more about this in the Kia Stonic review, link on the screen and in the description below. Sail away, sail away, sail away. The 1.5 TGDI engine replaced the 1.4 TGDI engine. It seems that like VW also Kia put brakes on downsizing. In this review I will focus on the PHEV drivetrain. Thanks to the 8.9 kWh battery living under the rear seat, the Seed Sports Wagon can drive up to 57 km in zero emissions mode. I never got this far, but 50 km is a safe bet. That's if you manage to charge the battery to full. It turns out the Seed and the Xseed PHEVs may have a problem charging caused by, if I understood correctly, some condensation forming between the plug and the socket in the car. The box on the charging cable displays a red warning and the onboard computer shows a charging error. Kia knows about the issue and it affects only some of the seed and egg seed PHEVs. There is a service procedure to fix it and it is obviously covered by the warranty. Just visit your dealer. Ultimately, it will get fixed in the cars that are yet to be produced. Like in the XSEED PHEV that I reviewed last year, also here on colder days the car starts the engine to get it up to temperature, so no guarantee you'll drive off in silence. Also, even when driving in electric mode, the engine may turn on once in a while to reheat or simply when you press the accelerator stronger. In the XSEED, even in sport mode, the best I managed was to maintain battery charge. Here, in sport mode, the battery clearly charges however at the expense of more fuel the instant fuel consumption meter shows up to 10 liters per 100 kilometers when it's charging just drop the sport and call it charge i mean nobody's gonna race this the infotainment system in the seed phev has more phev related information than i remember from the x seed phev i also would like some basic regenerative braking it's a shame kia didn't implement some of the tech it uses in its electric Soul or Nero. Speaking of implementation, Kia boasts safety systems are now even better. As far as I'm concerned, they are still annoyingly loud. Changing lanes during rush hour will end with you turning everything off. It's just bad implementation. Kia claims the Seed PHEV sports wagon does 0 to 100 km per hour in 10.8 seconds and 80 to 120 km per hour in 8.1 seconds. I got better results in Eco and Sport mode, better in Eco than in Sport. Otherwise, the Seed is easy and pleasant enough to drive. Except when in Sport mode, when the combustion engine works as a generator, the car is relatively quiet. It's a decent car to get from A to B, like the Corolla or the Golf. Fuel economy. Assuming you drive 60-70 km around the city, you will get about 3 liters per 100 km. Even with a lot of juice in the traction battery, the engine will kick in periodically. The longer you drive with empty batteries, the closer you get to 7 liters per 100 km, but I assume you are buying a PHEV because charging it regularly fits your lifestyle. Oh, and by the way, skip the wall box as it only cuts the charging time from 5 to 3 hours. Prices of the facelifted Kia Seed start at 19,000 euro for the hatchback. Add 1,000 for the estate, an average car will cost you around 30,000 euro. This PHEV with options costs around 41,000 euro, a hefty premium over the regular 1.5 petrol. The Kia Seed is a great alternative in the compact segment, but the PHEV is only for the heavily incentivized markets. And how do you like the Kia Seed? Do you prefer the hatch, the station wagon, or maybe the shooting brake? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.